Okay, so uh, now we are gonna continue our training uh, by analyzing this game uh, between Volk and Volkov. And okay, let's uh, get started here. Um, white plays uh, d4, uh, black plays uh, d5, uh, white plays uh, c4, and as black uh, we play e6 which is the Queen's Gambit declined and also called uh, the Orthodox white plays uh, knight to f3 and here black plays uh, c6 uh, which is a flexible uh, move order as you can see uh, this uh, it's like the Slav defense but we also played e6 already, so maybe we can call this the semi slav. Uh, and by playing this, we are trying to take on c4 and play b5 afterwards. That is one of the ideas. Uh, if uh, white plays knight c3, we can take, followed by b5. However, we have the extra pawn, but white has a lot of counterplay in the center. So, you know, this variation, uh, it's interesting. Uh, maybe white can play a4 too. So he stops b5, and then he can play a4 later, trying to get uh, his pawn back. And he already has a better center. So, you know, after knight c3, black can always play knight f6. And then we are uh, getting, you know, by transition, a very famous position from, you know, the semi-slav defense. Uh, so, here in this game, uh, white plays e3, defending the c4 pawn already. But when white plays this setup, there is a little drawback too and that is you know this bishop on c1 which is inside the pawn chain white can always try to uh, you know fix this by playing b3 and bishop b2 but right now this bishop on c1 it's locked same goes for bishop c8 of course and here as black we are being flexible by playing bishop to d6 and well I, I like this move you know we can also play knight of six and then again we are playing a known position from the slav defense however if we play bishop d6 here I think uh, this move it's flexible uh, for one reason I think we can try playing f5 later and then we are playing like a stone wall setup and we can make our position strong especially we we are controlling especially because we are controlling the e4 square so uh, that is why I like this and we can play the stone wall here because this bishop again it's inside the pawn chain and that is favoring us, I think. So, uh, white plays knight to c3. And here, black plays f5. As I said, I think playing the stone wall here is fine. And, you know, we can continue by knight f6. And then, as I said, we can make us, you know, stronger on e4. White plays uh, bishop to e2. You know, looking at this position and knowing some plans from the stone wall as white, maybe knight c3, I mean, it's not a good move after f5, because white would be happy to play b3 and bishop a3 one day to trade bishops off. But now, as the knight is on c3, I mean, this plan it's impossible unless he goes back to b1 but yeah I mean now he'll have to 
try something else and maybe bishop e2 you know it's a bit passive it's not a bad move because it's developing but I guess bishop d3 it's more aggressive and maybe depending on the situation white can consider playing g4 or not because otherwise you know again this guy it's inside the pawn chain we're gonna just play this and this and I like our position so I mean if white wants to get some advantage or if he wants to create some activity I guess bishop d3 it's uh, more aggressive than bishop e2 and here black plays uh, knight to d7 uh, I guess this knight d7 has a reason too it looks like uh, a random move in this position however I think it's not random see if we play knight up 6 here then white can consider playing knight e5 and then he can continue with f4 as well and then we get a pretty equal position you know he's gonna play f4 we're gonna also play knight e4 it's like that position it's quite equal but as white uh, didn't play knight e5 before he plays bishop e2 it's like now we can punish him because you know he's not able to play uh, knight to e5 but we are gonna be able to play knight f6 followed by knight to e4 so I like this uh, white castles here and queen e7 again I think uh, black is being uh, you know too careful here uh, but it's great because this knight e7 was careful and we are controlling the e5 square queen e7 it's okay maybe we could have tried knight f6 immediately I don't know I mean queen e7 we are probably moving the queen to e7 anyway because in the future you know he could try playing b3 a4 bishop a3 and then he is getting our best bishop uh, that is a very important point here too you know um, bishop d6 happens to be our best bishop in this position because it's not crashing into our pawn chain on the other hand uh, bishop c8 it's a bad bishop because this bishop it's lacking good diagonals so that is why you know I don't like uh, this bishop on c8 and this bishop it's usually a bad bishop not only you know in this game but in a lot of openings as the French, the Karokan, uh, well the Stonewall, the Dutch so yeah it's a good idea to prevent b3 a4 bishop a3 plan I like it and white plays uh, bishop d2 again I don't think white is playing badly I think he's playing passive uh, I don't see any idea after bishop d2 um, but okay uh, I can't uh, suggest a better plan either or well maybe I can I mean queen c2 I would play followed by rook b1 and then somehow try and try to play you know a3 b4 and then you know uh, as white we can get some counter play at queen side because uh, at king side you know black is too strong I think we are just too strong at king side we have a lot of pieces a lot of strong points for our pieces I mean if white wants to create some counter play should be at queen side in my opinion so bishop d2 and now knight f6 uh, makes a lot of sense we finish our development we are ready to castle and of course if we are allowed we can try playing knight e4 too uh, white plays a3 looks like he wants to play b4 later and as black uh, we castle here again this is making a lot of sense we are playing the natural moves 
and white plays uh, b4. Well, he's trying to get uh, some uh, counter play at queenside. But again, I, I don't see why he played bishop d2. He could have played this without playing bishop d2 as well. And here a6. Well, uh, this is a nice way to, you know, defend against, you know, white's attack at queenside. You know, we, we have to remember we are playing black too. Usually when we play as black, we have to be careful uh, and we should be happy by equalizing. And here I think our position is just too solid. If he pushes b5, for instance, then by playing this we have the chance of opening the DA file and of course here uh, we are winning a pawn and we still keep our good position so I don't like this for white so that is why he plays queen b3 you know there's another move we have to talk about here c5 uh, looks great in this position because uh, white uh, he's winning space uh, however uh, if he plays a c5 we can just move our bishop back and now as white it's he's not attacking the center anymore this allows us play e5 and then we are gonna have a great position in the center if we play e5 here we are also freeing this diagonal for our bishop and we can try playing e4, winning more space. If white leaves this pawn on c4, there's no chance we play e5, because, you know, then the d5 pawn is quite weak. So if white decides to play c5, he'll have to be careful. So we play knight to e4. You know, we are being aggressive here and I like this here we see why bishop d2 was probably mistaken I mean now this bishop is under attack and if white takes on e4 yeah this is uh, too risky we can just take with the f pawn we are pushing this knight back and this knight of free it's uh, his best defender if he has to play something like this it's obviously wrong you know uh, we are getting a lot of counter play for free we are winning space also doesn't make any sense for white to take but he plays a c5 which is probably a big decision from the strategy point of view as we said once he plays a c5 then our e5 push it's gonna be uh, much much stronger uh, in this position so problem with c5 is pawns can't move back and white you know he would love having the pawn on c4 back because now after bishop c7 the e5 break it's gonna be powerful and I think this is one of the reasons black uh, wins this game and at queenside we are still solid uh, and you know we have the target uh, the big target which is the king if white attacks at queenside his targets are you know pieces only if we attack at kingside we have the king as a target so that is you know quite important too white plays a4 well uh, looks like he's ready to play uh, b5 and he's opening uh, that position at queenside and here we're gonna just play e5 um, we are also attacking and as we are opening that position we can play knight takes bishop anytime when we have an open position you know you have to know that bishops are much better than knights 
So, I mean, if that position gets open, then we have knight takes d2, and we're getting a bishop for a knight. That is a good bit business for us. And white plays uh, rook to e1. <clears throat> when he plays rook e1, he's being careful. And I understand because, you know, he can consider playing something like b5. But then, you know, there are some tricks going on here, such as, you know, e takes d4, e takes. And in some variations, I mean, we don't have to play this, I mean, necessarily, but, you know, this bishop on e2 can be hanging. It's only being protected by, you know, by this knight. So, looks a bit risky, you know. And that is why I think white plays a rookie one. However, you know, if I were white, I would still play b5 here, maybe. I know it's a bit risky, uh, but okay. You know, I also think, uh, you know, despite the fact, you know, black has the bishop, the bishop pair, you know, we have only two weaknesses here. I understand black is maybe better, but I don't think it's such a big deal. I mean, we can continue on playing and this bishop it's protected, so maybe black can play better here too. I mean, he, maybe we can just leave the pawns there, you know, and we can try to, you know, improve our position more. We can try to do that as well. But overall, you know, from the practical point of view, as white, I would play b5. I mean, I cannot be defending the whole game. I have to, you know, create some counterplay. So that is why, you know, I think b5, if I were white, it's out of question. But okay, rook e1, it's too solid. And black plays queen f6. Well, this is interesting. We are putting some more pressure on the d4 pawn. As we can see, the knight on f3, it's kind of overloaded. It's defending the bishop on d2, and it's also defending uh, the d4 pawn. So if he plays whatever, I mean like a5, then we can just take, and then we can just win a pawn, because again, this knight was overloaded. We just get uh, the d4 pawn here, and at the higher level, you know, a pawn, it's usually more than enough uh, to win. And, you know, that is why white has to defend here. And now he plays rook d1, uh, defending the bishop on d2, but playing rook e1 and then playing rook d1, like, in two steps, uh, this is like realizing uh, white made a mistake. And now he's defending, you know, the bishop on d2. But yeah, he wasted two tempos here. And maybe this is too much. I like uh, black's move here. Maybe we can play some other moves, you know. We can try queen g6. We can try queen h6, maybe. I mean, we have some options. We can probably, you know, consider taking as well. And then trying to, you know, continue with our attack. This king h8, it's interesting, you know, just in case it's fine, you know, to get out of, you know, the queen's diagonal, so we stop any future tactic. I don't know, imagine knight takes d5, you know, becomes possible one day, then it's, you know, it's great to stop it. So that is why I like king h8, and it's also a good waiting move. Because if, you know, if white plays b5 here, which is a natural move, then we can just take. Now this rook is overloaded, defending too many things. We can take on a1, and then we just win the pawn again. And when we take d4, then c5 is falling next. 
and this is obviously winning two extra pawns plus the bishop pair this is obviously too much so yeah there's no sense for white to play b5 so white takes on e5 but now this bishop's diagonal gets open too white takes and then bishop takes look how powerful our bishop is I mean we have a lot of targets a lot of threats here as you can see one of our threats you know is knight takes d2 the other one is taking on c3 not to mention we can probably consider sacrificing here on h2 which is what happened you know this king is just uh, too too lonely in this position uh, there's no knight on f3 uh, defending you know the king that is why usually we say uh, the knight on f3 is the best defender of the king because it's defending key squares around the king and here white it's lacking this knight uh, yeah, I, I don't think uh, white can take the bishop. If he does, then, you know, apart from knight takes, I think this is better. Queen h4 check. Uh, he has to play king g1. Then we can just take on f2, which is, yeah, check. Then if he plays king or king, we just play, you know, the famous maneuver. We can use the rook on the third rank to attack the sixth rank in this case and then we are just mating him there's not much white can do to stop it you know he can play bishop h5 and still after this uh, he's getting mated next so here after this uh, we see you know after you know a couple of mistakes like rook e1 rook d1 and then you know playing this it's like you know White is giving up. However, you know, it's not easy to suggest a move for White here. Because if he takes on e4, then, you know, the opening of the f file, it's terrible too. Because we are taking the f2 pawn and we are winning there. And, you know, there's nothing White can do to stop it. So, you know, here. Well, after rook c1, bishop takes h2, king f1. Here, uh, as we have a solid foundation, our attack it's been successful. We have to finish him off. But you know, sometimes the best way to do it, you know, it's by slowing down. We can just finish our development and also make sure all our pieces are helping. So that is why I like bishop e6. Uh, white plays queen c2, queen h4. We threat mate. Uh, white plays bishop e1. Well, of course, if he takes, we don't have to think about this much. Uh, we are opening the f file and we are mating him pretty soon. So bishop e1 is better. And a5. Well, okay, here a5 looks okay. You know, we are destroying his pawn structure. We can also try, you know, bringing some more pieces to the center. And one day we can push f4. This should be over soon. White plays knight a2, trying to hold his queen side. And f4, yeah, should be doing it. We have a big, you know, attack. The king is too unprotected. Uh, white tries to close, you know, the f file by playing bishop f3. Yeah, if he takes, I guess we can just take. And then we threat knight g3 mate. So this is not cool. Um, by playing this, yeah, knight g5 should be winning. Again, his king, you know, it's hopeless. White plays king e2. Knight takes pawn takes and after if the f takes e3 well here white resigns but yeah his position was hopeless 
if he takes with the king then you know we have a lot of winning moves here a lot of threats such as special path 4 you know the king is too open there and if he takes with a pawn I think the simple queen h3 should be doing it if he goes up 4 then we have this you know his position is falling so that is why he resigns here so in this you know example we saw that sometimes as white we have to be aggressive in the opening and we also realize that c5 was quite quite weak uh, after c5 uh, we think that white is winning space but then he's not caring about the center the tension there it's over and after black play d5 he got a great position with a great attack.